Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to start a new reading vlog. So it's Friday, um, April 14th, I had to think about that. And I do not have to work today and I do not have to work Monday because it is a state holiday in Maine. Today I don't have to work because I've already completed my work week. So I have a four day weekend. So I have been seeing these videos where people try to see how long it will take them to read for 24 hours. So I figure I have a four day weekend without very much scheduled. Um, that could all change quickly and rapidly, generally does in my life. But right now, Friday morning, I don't have anything really a lot scheduled. So I think I'm gonna try to see how long it's gonna take me to read for 24 hours. So much like my mid-month book bash last weekend, where I kept track of how many hours I read. I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time I'm gonna keep the vlog going until I until I meet the 24 hour time period. So what am I working on? I've got my cup of tea. I'm out here on the doorstep because it is a gorgeous spring morning um, and I'm loving it. I'm loving it's finally spring here where I am. So I will be working on to start um, this short story collection, The Birds and Other Stories by Daphne du Maurier. Um, I have read the first three or four stories, so there's only a couple left. I am like on page 155 of this little over 200, how many pages is in here? 242 pages, so less than 100 pages left to go in this short story collection. I will also be working on Ivan the Terrible by Henri Troyot. This is my buddy read with Sean the Book Maniac and is also our pick for People April, the readathon where you read books about people. So nonfiction, biography, memoir, that sort of thing, collections of letters. This is a biography. Um, and for the booktube prize, I will be continuing on and my main read is Blood and Ruins by Richard Overy. This is a nonfiction World War II history. Uh, very comprehensive. So those are my main reads. I do need to start a new audiobook today uh, because I finished a book two prize audiobook yesterday. I finished Did You Did Ye Hear Mammy Died by Seamus O'Reilly um, yesterday. So that's three book two prize books down so far, which is awesome. Um, and but I think that I will start the book that is the group read for um Trans Girl April, which is Felix Ever After. I can't remember the author name, but I will put a picture up here. And that will be the audiobook that I start today when I'm out and about running my errands. So I'm going to, you know, start my timer um, and read here and drink my tea out here on the doorstep in this lovely, lovely spring sunshine. And I will check in when I have some news to report. <music> Saturday morning and welcome back to my kitchen cupboard. Um, I just wanted to check in about my progress yesterday. So I read three and a half hours on Friday, which was great. Uh, I read, I finished a book. I finished a book I've been working on since March, which was fantastic. So that was Birdsplaining by Jasmine Donahue, Donahue, Jasmine Donahue. Uh, and I had picked that one up for Dowiethon, which is the Welsh readathon. So Jasmine Donahue is a Welsh author and she's talking about her experiencing, her experiences living in Wales um, and particularly in the realm of birding. So the, the title is great, Birdsplaining, because it, she has a whole essay where she talks about how men, particularly white men, have always been um, traditionally the people to sort of be birders and to be describing birds and to be writing the field guides about birds and all that. And that how many times she's been birdsplained to by men when she's been out trying to um, watch birds or look at birds or whatever. And I thought that was, that's a really interesting uh, lens for this collection of essays because uh, Jasmine, Gil uh, Jasmine Donahue 
talks a lot not just about birding, like there's stuff in there about birding, there's nature writing, um, talking about the whale's landscape and some other places that she's lived. There's a whole, uh, there's a whole essay on rock climbing, but she also weaves into these essays that are sensibly about something in the natural environment, things about, you know, there's hints of her personal life that she weaves in. Um, the the essay about rock climbing, for example, she talks about fear and overcoming fear and how fear can freeze you in place and how you work to overcome that and what works to overcome it and what doesn't. Um, and there's hints throughout the book of, uh, of an abusive relationship that she was involved in earlier in her life, but it doesn't really get fully explained. But I liked how she wove in sort of her personal um, story, her personal life, uh, anecdotes uh, about herself, also greater social issues, you know, um, how women are always at risk when they are trying to do things out in the world, whether that be birding or anything else. If a woman is alone, there's a risk there um, and what that's like for people who want to be involved in things like birding. Um, you know, just greater how women have been sort of erased from things like uh, telling, describing the natural environment, whether that be birds or anything else. There's a great section that talks about how um, bird guides are focused on the male of the species as the more colorful um, and the more interesting part of the pair and then the the female of the species are often described as an afterthought you know um like uh for example the cardinal you know is the male bright red da 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 da, da. the female um you know d drab brown or drab olive and you know that's it for the female where they go off into raptures for the male so i thought that was really interesting and not so, not something i had ever really thought about or considered and just another example of how um you know females have been the secondary uh the secondary thing to be described uh not just for humans but for other species as well so that's great Really enjoyed my time spent with that. Thank you to Karen over at Roving Reader for recommending that book to me because it was definitely a Heidi book. I also read um, a bunch more in Blood and Ruins. I am now on page 388 of this monster that I'm reading for the BookTube Prize. So I'm going to be continuing on with that. I did start my audiobooks, uh, my audiobook Felix Ever After for a trans girl April. Um, and I like the narrator. Um, it's about... Uh, a young trans boy who he's 17 just turned 17 um and you're getting his backstory here i've only listened to about the first 45 minutes of it um and uh i i'm liking the story but i will tell you that already the teenage angst is grading on me a little bit so not so much Felix's personal story, but Felix's interaction with the other teenagers in his particular social group. <sighs> yeah, teenagers are a lot sometimes. So yeah, that's going to be difficult, I think, um, to for me to overcome is my irritation with um, certain teenage behaviors. So anyway, that's my audiobook. Uh, it is Saturday morning. Um, I do plan to do housework and things like that. So I probably will be doing some more audiobook listening. But first, I'm going to sit down and drink a cup of tea and read some more of Blood and Ruins. <music>
it's Sunday morning of my four day weekend push to try to read um, basically mid month book bash version 2.0, but also to try to read, see how long it takes me to read for 24 hours. So as of the end of the day, Saturday, I had read eight and a half hours. So that was awesome. I got five hours of reading in yesterday. Of course, some of that's audiobook time, obviously, but still, I feel like that was a good push for Saturday. And plus a Saturday where I got um, quite a bit of other projects done as well. So that was good. So it's Sunday morning. I've like done my Sunday morning housework and I have uh, been reading a little bit. Um, so I am on page 500 of Blood and Ruins, that huge World War II tome that I'm reading for Book Two Prize. So I am past the halfway mark. I'm feeling really good about that as well. And yesterday I finished this book off my ancient TBR that I've been working on uh, for over a month. So this is The Birds and Other Stories by Daphne du Maurier. I actually listened to the titular story, The Birds, on audiobook, and I would highly recommend that you do that as well because it is fabulous on audio. It is so creepy and atmospheric and just like a really, really excellent story. And the rest of the stories in this collection are also, for the most part, good. There were a couple that I didn't connect with as well, but for most of them I really enjoyed. The, uh, the creepiness continues throughout. It is very atmospheric. It is very... Um, many of them feel very claustrophobic. They are a lot about um, sort of relationships between people and uh, romantic relationships or other kinds of relationships. And in, they're just, you know, they're just a bit twisted, each, each one of them. So that is really fun. And the last story just sort of ties the collection all together um, in a way that I was not expecting. So that was really fun. And I'm not always a huge short story fan, um, but these ones just really work for me because I think they're very clear. Um, there's not, these aren't uh, modernistic or, you know, sort of uh, leaving a lot to the reader interpretation. These are stories. These are beginning, middle, and end stories. And um, I just really appreciate that. I really appreciate the state straightforwardness of them. They're very gothic. Um, you can see a lot. I'm not sure exactly when these were published. Let me see if I can get to. So Daphne du Maurier was alive from 1907 to 1989. And this particular short story collection, 1952. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because I think that there is a lot of influence from World War II in these stories. Like a couple of them in particular are very specifically um talking about things that happened in World War II or influenced by things that happened in World War II. So yeah, and while I'm I'm reading these, at the same time I'm reading that nonfiction book about World War II. So that actually um, really helped me put some things together in my own mind. So that was great. So highly recommend The Birds and Other Stories by Daphne du Maurier. If you're looking for an atmospheric, creepy um, short story collection that really is very satisfying. So today I am going to be, I've been listening to my audiobook while I've been cleaning, and that's Felix Ever After, which I'm reading for Trans Girl April. Um, and I'm over halfway through that so far, which is great. Um, and I think I had talked about how I was unsure about the book because there was a lot of teenage angst at the beginning that I was not connecting with. Um, and that has lessened the teenage angstiness part of it has, I don't know if it's lessened, but I've become more attuned I've become more accepting of it I guess but I think that this story of Felix who is this um, trans person who is 17 years old and is sort of navigating their own identity and trying to figure out where they fit in the world um, and is thinking about you know applying to colleges and where where he wants to be where he wants to go with his life all the while navigating friendships and family concerns um, just a really excellent look at what a trans teenager has to go through like all of the obstacles and all of the prejudice and all of the just terrible things that people do to other people in this world while also being a teenager and dealing with all the regular teenage drama that teenagers have to live through like being a teenager is not an easy place to be period for anyone and so it's just like extra extra tough also Felix is um a person of color so not only are they dealing with the fact that they're trans, they're also a brown person. So you can imagine what uh, their life is like. So 
yeah, really, um, really touching in a lot of places and really eye-opening in other places. And so, yeah, I am glad that I stuck with my, my first initial, like, oh no, I don't know if this is for me and kept going with the audiobook. I think the audiobook is really well done. So I'll be continuing on with that and also with Blood and Ruins for the BookTube prize. And I will check in again later. <music> shout out two new fun snacks these are new flavor of sun chips that just showed up in the grocery store and they are spicy and yummy and they're made with black beans so i'm i'm telling myself that they're healthier than regular chips and these canada dry sparkling waters um which i have had the lemon lime and the mandarin orange and both are very good and they have no sodium in them and so then it gives me like a feeling like I'm drinking a carbonated beverage with my chip because as Doris says, nobody wants to eat their chips with plain water. version 2.0 slash 24 hour reading challenge. So yesterday, Sunday, I read a total of five and a half hours. So I'm at a total of 14 hours in three days, which is awesome. Um, it's Monday and we'll see how I get on. I do have today off. Um, I finished two books total, which I've talked about both of those. I did spend most of my time yesterday working on this book and I got up to page 600 by the end of the day, which was awesome. And then I also read three chapters in this biography for People April. So I, um, and then I also worked on my audiobook of Felix Ever After. So that's what I worked on yesterday and I'm feeling pretty good, although I don't think I'm gonna complete the 24 hours today in four days, but you know, who knows what will happen. Good morning and happy Tuesday. It is rainy and crappy out again for the third day in a row and it's cold in my house. Like my nose is cold. <laughs> but anyway, you're not here for the weather report. You're here for a report on how my reading is going. So at the end of yesterday, which was Monday, I had reached 18.5 hours. So that is fantastic. I really pushed hard this weekend to read as much as I could. I read four and a half hours total yesterday. And I mainly focus this weekend on this chunker, Blood and Ruins for the BookTube Prize. And I'm happy to report that I'm on about page 725, which means I have about 150 pages left to go. So that's very exciting. The other very exciting thing is that I'm going to be starting a bunch of new books this week because I have some buddy reads that are happening plus um, some other things that I want to accomplish before we get to the end of April. So 18.5 hours, I'm trying to get to 24. So that means I have five and a half hours left to go. Obviously not going to read five and a half hours today because today is a work day and um, this is seven o'clock on Tuesday morning. I'm just getting ready to start work. So I won't have as much reading time today. I have about two and a half hours left on my audiobook, which is Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar, which I'm reading for Trans Girl April. Um, so hoping to finish that. I don't know if I'll finish it today. I don't have to drive anywhere really. So I may not be able to finish that today, but I'll be working on that today. I also last night, right before bed, started this. This is Call of the Reed Warbler, A New Agriculture, A New Earth by Charles Massey. This is uh, for the Book Naturalist Book Club for the month of April, and it is also an Australian author. So it would work for Aussie April. Um, I only read like the first five pages of this last night before I fell asleep. So gonna be working on this this week. And then two new books that I'm going to be starting. Um, I'm gonna be starting this one today at lunchtime. This is The Golden Hunt by Salman Rushdie and this is a buddy read with Joe Smith. I don't even know what this book is about because we talked about buddy reading it so long ago that I can't remember now what it's about so we're gonna find out together what that one's all about and then this week I will also be starting Femina, uh, A New History of the Middle Ages Through the Women Written Out of It by Jim 
Janina Ramirez. So, um, love this cover so much. Um, I am buddy reading this one with Britta Bowler. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be starting this week. Like I said, I'm going to continue this vlog, uh, until I reach 24 hours and we'll see how long it takes me now that I'm back in my work schedule. Um, we'll just have to see how quickly I can get to it. I will... I do have things going on, um, obviously my regular work day, and I have some other things going on uh, in the evenings this week, so we'll just see how long it takes, and I will be as curious as you are <laughs> to see this experiment of how long it takes me to read for a 24-hour period. Happy Wednesday morning, so this is the fourth, fifth, sixth day of this challenge to try to read 24 hours. And I am at 22 and a half hours of reading time, which is fantastic. So I have two and a half hours left to go in this challenge. Can I finish it today? Um, who knows? It is a work day. Um, I have a full work day ahead of me and then uh, a supper plans this evening with my parents. So We'll see. I did finish um, another book yesterday. I finished my audiobook, Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender. The author, Kaysen Callender, is a trans author from the Virgin Islands. And this Felix Ever After is a YA book about a young trans boy named Felix who is uh, dealing with trying to figure out his identity and trying to figure out what he wants to do with his life. Does he want to go to college? If so, where? And he's also trying to navigate romantic and platonic friendships. Um, and there is a lot of teenage angst in this book. <laughs> I will warn you, if it, that is something that bothers you, there is a lot of teenage angst in this book. And Felix spends an awful lot of time like getting upset at various people and like walking out of places because he's upset. And as an adult, it's very frustrating behavior, although it totally makes sense. And Felix is a great character uh, because I feel that he is very um, realistically drawn um, as a teenager. So th this is a very informative book about what it's like to be a trans teenager, about the kinds of uh, prejudices and um, aggressions that you would face in that situation. And Felix is not only um, trans, he's also, uh, he is um, black and queer. And so there is lots going on here. Um, and there's lots to delve into and there's lots to learn from this book. So I think it's a great book uh, for that. I just think that my level of tolerance for teenage angst is probably not as high as some people's. And so that did bother me at times. What I did like very much besides learning a lot more about um, a, the journey of a trans teenager through navigating those rocky waters um, was that Felix is an artist. And so a lot of this book is about him expressing himself through his art. And I thought that was really wonderfully done. Um, and the friendships that he makes along the way um, are very realistic. I do think that some folks may have a problem with sort of the casual use of drugs and alcohol in this book, but I personally was not bothered with it because I feel like it's probably very realistic um, for a teenager. So like, let's not all bury our head in the sands about what teenagers are getting up to. I mean, Felix is 17 years old. I know what I was doing when I was 17. Um, and the other thing that bothered me about this book was the like this often happens in YA or middle grade books that the parents are just like, they're either really terrible or they're just completely absent. <laughs> And both of those things are happening in this book. And so many times I'm like, these parents are making such terrible parenting choices. <laughs> like, I just, like, Felix's dad is trying. He's trying to learn how to come to grips with the idea that his son is trans. And, like, he's been very supportive, but he's also does things wrong. And I think that's realistic. But he also, like, just lets Felix do whatever he wants. And, I mean, I know Felix is 17, but I'm like... You know, there are no rules, there are no curfews, there are no boundaries. Like, Felix just comes and goes how he pleases. And to me, as a parent, um, I just was not, like, that just was not my parenting style. So I had a hard time with that. And other parents in this novel are just absolutely horrendous, like, abusive, terrible people. So, like, 
the parenting was just absolute hot trash. Um, so that also was bothersome. But anyway, I am glad that I read this book. I read it for Trans Girl April. I'm glad that it was the group read for that particular readathon, which is hosted by Say Kevy. And yeah, I'm glad that I read that one. So I have to pick a new audiobook at some point. I may pick another book for Trans Girl April. I think I have access to a sci fi book um, that I'm interested in. So I may pick that because I am reading an awful lot of heavy nonfiction in my physical book. So <laughs> might be good to have something genre going on the audiobook. I did it. It is Wednesday night and I finished my 24 hours of reading. I actually went a half an hour over because I am not good at math. So it took me six days to read for 24 hours. I finished three books and I uh, started quite a few more. I've read several hundred pages in Blood and Ruins, that thousand page book about World War II. So I think this was a very successful challenge. Um, I didn't know how long it would take me to read 24 hours. And so the answer is with a lot of work and effort, I can do it in six days. Um, so those uh, 24 and 48 hour readathons are never gonna work for me. But um, this was a fun project. I really enjoyed myself. I hope you've enjoyed watching the vlog and I'll talk to you soon.